Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Strecce, and Yu Piscot as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good morning, brilliant humans, and welcome back to Amsterdam. We are at KubeCon EU, Cloud Native Con as well, and I am here with my fabulous co-host for our morning segment to give you all of our hot takes from day one. My name's Savannah Peterson. I'm joined here with you. We've got Rob and we've got John. I'm surrounded by brilliance. Gentlemen, how are you doing this morning? Awesome, great. How are you? I am, good? I am fantastic, okay. obviously. Okay. Rob, what was the most interesting thing you learned yesterday? I, I think the big thing from yesterday was platform engineering is real. Uh, a lot of the people, not only the projects, but the vendors are aiming at that, and I think we're going to hear a lot more about that today as well as we go through the day. What about you, Yup? Yeah, I agree. So, so platform engineering definitely a thing. Um, but for me, it really means that we've, we've kind of gone into, we're not really sure what we're doing, into we're maturing this ecosystem. And so we're seeing solutions that are, you know, becoming more mature, becoming more production ready. And it's good to see that we're, you know, we've entered this phase where we start to figure this whole thing out. And I think that's just a good, you know, good spot to be in and it's exciting to see where this is going. I love that you said that. The ecosystem, I think, was definitely a real theme. This isn't just an orchestrator or a platform. It's not just about containers. It's about all the things that support what's going on here and all the open source projects. John, you had your finger on the pulse yesterday. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, looking at yesterday and then what's lined up for today, I think the big thing I took away was that we're back to steady state events. I mean, this is 10,000 people. For KubeCon totally Europe, agree. it's not the tier one show. It's North it America. Is buzzy. It is packed. It's a 2,000 uh, person waiting list. RSA next week in the US is going to be absolutely packed. I expect North America, KubeCon to be again jam packed. So we're back, to, we're back to face to face steady state and this community, this is what it's all about. So I thought that's a huge, huge uh, accomplishment back to the standards. The other one is, is that this industry is about to get disrupted by AI and they have no idea what's coming down the tracks. I think they're so focused on their blocking and tackling of infrastructure, Kubernetes, mm -hmm. as that progresses to mainstream, platform engineering you mentioned but a lot of the gaps are being filled in. Binary support, compiler support uh, for say Watson we talked about yesterday. So a lot of the ball's moving down the field, but the AI surge is going to come. I think that's going to be a real wild card uh, in next year, this year, so. Let's talk about it, John. Where do you think we're off at with that right now? Well, I think this is not a data-centric community. They're very uh, infrastructure. They're gears, boxes, protocols, and they have data, but it's data around machine, machine blogging, not like a chat GPT, large language model. So I think it'll be pretty straightforward for this community to adopt AI because they're automating already, so automation's a big feature. So I don't think it's going to be a disastrous thing, it's going to be a good thing. You agree, yeah. Rob? Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be more prevalent as we go through the next couple of years, especially in observability space. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things in this, and I think this actually ties in really well with the platform engineering discussion because you have so much logs and data and traceability that you have to go and figure out. And that's where the AI actually fits in. You can model the data because they know the data patterns. I think where it gets blurry is when you get to security and some of the other things where are you putting your code in there? Is it a public model? Is it a private model? Do you have enough of data in your private model to actually go and look at that? There's still some big chasms to bridge. Well, the, the other thing too, you, we were talking about yesterday, platform engineering with Portworks. It's kind of evolved the definition. I mean, you go back three years ago, platform engineering was, I want to be like Google. Uh huh. Yeah. SREs, Tech Lab. And then it's evolved to like, what is DevOps? Is it, a, I'm a DevOps engineer, what the hell does that mean? We're in the DevOps department. So it was DevOps is kind of being abused, and then DevSecOps comes in. So DevOps it kind of moved part. essentially to be That's the right. new IT. Yeah. So uh, platform engineering is essentially modern IT. And then we heard from uh, merely yesterday from Portworks that the core old definition kind of drops down into the infrastructure and abstracted away. So I think that's a, a nuanced point that I noticed yesterday is that platform engineering is the modern version of basically IT. Interesting. Yeah. I think my 
I, you know, my, I just came off five weeks in the rainforest. So my take on where we're off at with AI and with some of this is, is of a perspective a little more removed from the Silicon Valley bubble and from this community a little bit. And I have to say I'm a little worried about the governance and the ethics of what's going on. I, I think that actually the open source community is perhaps one of the only gate checks that we're going to have with this. With some of the, you know, you've got the biggest companies in the world in an arms race right now to, to own this space. And that's exciting because it's pushing innovation forward. But it also makes me a little bit nervous because we all know how biased some of those models can be given their data sets or, or some of the darker side of this. There's a lot of customer privacy issues depending on what you're loading in and, and how private that is. And I do think security is a big deal. I, I, I think it all is very appropriate though that we're having this discussion, we're hearing it in the hallways, no one knows what's going on yet. Yes. We're only about day 100 well, in this whole buzz chat, cycle. Yeah, you're right on the money. This chat GPT phenomenon is kind of, everyone's been playing with it. But what people don't know is, and Basam talked about this yesterday, was you're putting your stuff in the public web. And, and people so, are missing that. They're so there are companies that. here have been putting in their code. We know the Samsung story is public. They had IP in there. They were putting company private information. Some companies are putting in their own customer information. So they think it's a tool to help them rewrite memos or rewrite code, but that's IP. So then it brings up all kinds of issues like, okay, it's out in the open. What's the IP rights? Exactly. Competition stealing it. So like, this is like slippery slope. So I think you know, you're going to see a pullback not from a ethics, oh, it's going to rule the world, but more from a, oh shit, what's our liability, yeah. privacy, huge. Well, and exactly, and, and also the kind of operational security angle of this, I mean, we are in the infrastructure space, right? This is not a data engineering community, this is an infrastructure community. And so seeing how this Very group will yeah. start to deal with and recognize how this works, yeah. that's going to be super interesting to see because we're, at, you know, we're only scratching the surface we're just beginning, we're literally just experimenting, we're making mistakes, Samsung's making mistakes, we all are. Everyone's making mistakes. And that's yeah. fine, but yeah. it's interesting to see where is this going to take us. Yeah. What's, what's the evolution of the role of platform engineering, like Rob said, um, you know, a year from now, will it have evolved to a place where we as a community are the gatekeepers of these policies, of this yeah. compliance, to make sure companies don't repeat these mistakes. Totally. Yeah. And, and I was thinking too yesterday on the AI conversation, we were kind of groping to try to get a feel for where it would kind of go. It, it went boring on some conversations, didn't really kind of stick, but then I knew it would be meandering around a little bit, but what we asked yesterday was, where will AI lock in in this community? And I think what I walked away with was, Automation for sure, but security will be huge. I mean, you mentioned um, the security aspect of it. Yeah. I think you're going to see the actors, both good and bad, dig into this, and you're going to see some new stuff <laughs> we haven't seen before on the offense and defense side. So that's where I expect to see that kind of first strike of kind of like cool, weird AI. And I think that's going to be interesting to see where that lands. Because, I mean, you talk about S3 buckets that are open, port scanning, scanning on containers, container security, Writing code from chat bots, you're going to have code pollution. I mean, this is going to, I mean, who's going to watch the code that was written by bots yeah. and monitor right. that? So <clears throat> I think observability is going to get ups, turned upside down. I think uh, it's going to be kind of a shit show for a while there. <laughs> That's a good technical term for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think <laughs> code pollution, <laughs> we're. we're I, and I, one of my favorite terms in the world. So I, 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 I think when you hey, look, we're bringing the, you know, hey, you got to bring it in the morning. I mean, it, I think when you look at it, it's, it's it was funny because I was just at the keynote and they were talking about the up project update for confidential computing and things of that nature. So to your point, from an infrastructure perspective, there are some things that are competing to help anonymize things, not just encryption, but how do you tag things and use them in a more general way. And I, I think. That's going to be interesting. I don't think that gets enough airtime here. I think a lot of the scanning, bloat, com container bloat, you know, from a security perspective, gets a lot of airtime. But there's things that are, are happening. Um, I also thought what was interesting, and it will be interesting to hear today, is there was a big talk, like a really good talk um, by one of the presenters from CMCF uh, this morning about how not enough people are stepping up and really becoming leaders of projects. And they're having a gap, a, you know, like That's a real yeah. talent gap in re leading these projects. And I think that to me is super interesting given the community and how big it's gotten with you know 190 plus right. projects going on. And they're yeah. also talking about yeah. contributor burnout. 
with 54. I was just going to say, it's yeah. a lot of work. And I think, and yeah. that's that's just it. I mean, it's open source. A lot of this stuff is unpaid. Folks are doing this yeah. because they want to see these projects move forward. And that's actually why I think it's really cool that we're here and we, we, like, we had a conversation with Red Hat and how they help support a lot of these projects as yeah. well. It's going to take... I mean, it takes a village. This, this whole community is about community, which I love. But but it, you're you're spot on there in the sense that if we're going to see this evolution move forward, whether we're talking about AI or Kubernetes or any of this stuff, it's going to take some leaders who are going to have to take a lot of flack yeah. to step up into that role because it's it's hard. We're in uncharted waters right now. This yeah, is, and I think the the uh, that's uh, the complicating factor to that too is that makes it harder. Is that I was just out with some uh, European VCs last night. There's a lot more active investment in Europe than ever before. Um, just go back the past 10 years, that last cycle, it's on the upward slope big time on Europe. So one, how are you going to get burnout on contributors that when the alpha VCs are poaching the best talent to build companies? So you know, the question is going to be, can the open source funding model, which was beautiful last cycle, because you start a project, you do it in open source, it's kind of a freemium, and you turn it into a company, can that continue? That's going to yeah. be the real wild card. I think if they get that right, if the, if the greed pulls, pulls them out of the community, uh, you know, that could put more stress on the system. Yeah, you're, you're a token European. What's your hot take here? No, I, I mean, I, I completely agree that the, the market here in Europe is hot. It is still very much moving. And you, we see it around us, right? The you can buzz, tell just from the energy in this room right The now. energy, the buzz yeah. in, this, in this room at this event this week has been astounding. I did yeah. not expect it. I am very pleasantly surprised by it. Totally but it does agree. show that Europe is leading in this open source realm. Um, and we're seeing VCs jump on that. We're yeah. seeing, like, like John said, we're seeing a lot of activity here. Um, and I think you know, part of it is the active role of the foundations behind this community, mm -hmm. bridging that gap, driving this effort. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah I, the I other thing too, the other, uh, Savannah, that you point out is that, we were talking about this last night, riffing on this, what trade shows, and they used to be in the business, you had like independent events uh, for the conferences and trade shows. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. It's AWS reInvent, that's Amazon, CNCF's Linux Foundation. I heard they're making so much cash on this event. This is a de facto open source community and um, industry event at the same time, so really that's is. interesting. Europe's booming on the VC side, but coming back and looking at cloud growth in, the, uh, in EMEA, uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and Asia Pacific. You have Europe in particular on the enterprise side that's starting to, start to grow, but it's growing by country. And so you have kind of sovereignty issues. You mentioned compliance and governance. Yeah. This is kind of like boring like tech enterprise stuff, but it's actually very relevant in this market. So unlike North America where cloud growth is slowing down and cost optimization is the focus, it's actually expanding in Europe, but it's not expanding as obvious because it's has different country dynamics. And so it has a whole localization, dynamic. channel marketing, channel partners are going to develop. So I think a lot of people are looking at Europe as a massive growth, and certainly the cloud players are. Amazon's ahead, Azure's here. You're going to start to see a whole nother ball game, I think, this year in the next five with, with cloud. You're here, you're living it. Yeah, yeah we're going to see a lot of sovereign clouds, a lot of smaller clouds. You know, I'm not saying on-prem is going to make a comeback, but self-hosted is going to become a thing again. Yeah. Um, and so the pendulums, you know, we went all the way to cloud, and now the pendulum yeah. is starting to swing back. Uh, and especially in Europe, that whole sovereign yeah. aspect of it, I that's agree. going to be a big <coughs> differentiator for, you know, for everyone. In the community, the vendors, everyone. But, but going to your point on the data and the cloud, I mean, just look at the, I'll just, because I came from the data side of things. Most recently, you start to look at that Google Analytics has been outlawed in five countries in Europe <laughs> because the data goes outside of Europe yeah. from a GDPR. Yeah. You start to look at how it's being torn apart a little bit from a big yeah. conglomerate perspective. I do think things are coming back on-prem a lot more, especially in the dev and test area where people are looking for that on-prem, cloud on-prem experience. And there was a lot of talk about that yesterday even, and I, I think yeah. that's going to be huge because it's a cost savings aspect. I think there's a swing of the CFOs in these major companies back to CapEx, and I think that's well, going to be interesting. Well, I mean, cost optimization is a huge theme across yeah. the board, no matter the industry right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're seeing things like the collapse of banks, Silicon Valley Bank. Was that as big of a story here as it was for us in the U.S.? It was, it was. It, it, you know, yeah. People, what's, what's the people, EU hot take on that? Well, people started to get really worried really quickly. Yeah. Um, and and so even even though it was a little further from you know our situation, still we were we were looking at it as a tech industry and saying this is 
this can, this can go all, you know, either way. <laughs> yeah. Which bank do they run on there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's all good conversation. I think your product, that, that the Google Analytics thing's interesting because that, only because it's an American company, but I think the white space from a product, mark, from a product standpoint, the opportunity in Europe to get these differentiated, local, localized clouds by region, it's going to be a very interesting dynamic because if you just, that Google's one example, there's many others. Yeah, well, right. they'll pull out data that's flying out of the area. So you got regions, so, so it's going to be a question of, will the product market fill in those white spaces? And I think that's the opportunity that I see here is for entrepreneurs and businesses to fill the void saying, hey, we don't, you don't, we don't need Google Analytics, we'll have our own analytics package. Now they won't have clouds, Amazon will do that, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the cloud hyperscalers enable the market here in Europe. That's going to be a very interesting thing. And how does open source fill that goal? Because if more WebAssembly-like projects continue, the idea of developer productivity continues to get better, it's going to be faster coding time, it'll be faster MVPs built. Um, it'll be very interesting. It, it will be, and one of the things that I think is really interesting, I mean, since we're kind of doing this EUNA comparison right now, I find, and, and this is this is a perception thing, I don't have any data behind this, this is my personal opinion, the community here is so inclusive. Mm. And I mean, the open source community as a whole is extremely inclusive, but a lot of the conversations that we've had between the big brands and some of the smaller startups that are here, it's experts helping that next generation along. So perhaps there's not that traditional leadership role, but there is a desire for everyone to educate everyone else right now, especially because we're moving at scale, at velocity, with a lot of different technology all piling into one, which is kind of, it's an interesting intersection. It's an exciting time to be alive. Absolutely. <laughs> Rob, what did you do last night? Did you have fun? I, I had dinner and I then just dealt with emails and other stuff. Not 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 fun. Not maybe a little more fun tonight. But oh, I you think can tell we'll us what really happened. It. Come on. Yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> Don't hold back. Don't hey, hold back. I mean today Rob. is you know April 20th. So I went right. back to my room so. and worked. And I was and I you know, said a prayer. <laughs> and went to bed at 11. <laughs> You know, I was Bless good. you, John. I was yes. very, Bless you. I was very good last night. Yeah. You were a good boy. I went out with one of our favorite guests. <laughs> I went out with Kasten last night and had an absolute blast. And I know you had some fun at karaoke. Karaoke, yeah, all night long. Cute yeah. karaoke. And then you showed up wet and hung over, which is just a great place to be. That's just Cute the karaoke. great start of the day. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, joined by these fabulous gentlemen, my name is Savannah Peterson. It is 420. We are in Amsterdam. And you are watching our live broadcast of KubeCon EU. This is theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.